You wake up because you feel someone or something between your legs. You feel a prick in a spot on your leg that has periodically hurt and scabs over. As you recognize the being as one of the little grays that take you and do unmentionable things to you, you leap out of bed. It jumps back like a rocket, leaving behind a strange scratch from its long fingernails. This story was recently told by Whitley Strieber, one of the most famous alien abductees, who told his story in the book Communion. If you've been watching this channel, you know that I'm also an experiencer of anomalous body marks and dreams of aliens, but I don't think of them as evidence for alien abduction. Rather, I think of them as communication from non-human intelligences using the universal language of geometry. And these non-human intelligences may actually just be my own dream characters who are real in and of themselves. The key here is to understand the anomalous body marks as a geometric code, not numeric, that will help us enter the domain of communion. Join me as I explore this body mark as either proof of alien abduction or communication. Perhaps it's both. As a bonus, I'll connect these marks to an experiencer who was also so convinced that his dots in a line mark was evidence of alien abduction that he presented it to national audiences through ABC Prime Time. Now let's get back to Whitley. Synchronistically, one of my primary case studies in Missing Time Found is Paul, who Whitley shared this story with in a public interview on his Dreamland podcast on May 24th, 2024. Paul is an experiencer of vivid dreams who also had a strange mark in dreamlike encounters with gray aliens. We know they're dreamlike because he discerned their reality from the experience of sleep paralysis and other dream phenomena. The stories and photographs are presented as documented injuries sustained in a close encounter with visitors, aliens, or some type of NHI. I wrote about Paul in my books, Missing Time Found and Galathog the Gray's Field Guide to Anomalous Geometry. By the way, Galathog is the tall gray extraterrestrial who visited me in my dreams to explain my body mark and claims to have given me the body marks that has inspired this rather strange inquiry in the first place. In Missing Time Found, I wrote about Paul's mark. This marking is the clearest I have analyzed and exhibits obvious geometric qualities, which is still true today. Paul was instrumental in my body mark inquiry. When I discovered geometry in my rather unclear mark, I sought for other examples to confirm the dots in a line, dial, body mark was a phenomenon. I immediately found Paul's mark on Reddit, and its clarity felt like a gift because the geometry is undeniable and they are certainly not bedbugs. The clarity of Paul's geometry elevates all other reports of similar dots in a line body marks that are associated with dreamlike or fragmentary memories of entity encounters. This is what Whitley said to introduce Paul. One of the things we have in common, we are both close encounter witnesses, big time. And you'll see later that Paul has some injuries on his body that are very similar to ones I had. And we'll show the images on the show later, side by side. This is real, folks. It's not not real. And it's not theoretical. It's not spiritual. Well, it is spiritual. But believe me, not always. And sometimes not in a good way. And sometimes in a good way. That was as good an introduction to the phenomenon as any because the phenomenon is highly strange and elusive to talk about. Whitley felt that Paul's mark was so similar to his that he invited him on his show and he publicly revealed two anomalous body mark photographs. The first was a circular mark on his leg that Whitley said is attended to, often by the visitors placing a thin needle in it. As Whitley tells it, the second mark was a scratch mark caused by a gray alien's long fingernail as it was surprised when Whitley woke up as it was attending the first mark. If this sounds strange to you, don't worry, it is. Stories like these have a long precedent of being used as evidence for supernatural beings as documented in medieval witch hunts. Something seems to be going on with these strange body marks 
and for many serious people, they are evidence for interactions with entities not from this world. So how is Whitley's mark similar to Paul's? Both involve dreams of greys around the time of the marking. Although Paul noted a dreamless sleep until he awoke to a shadowy figure in his room. Both characterize the marks as wounds, Whitley as a scratch, and Paul as intramuscular puncture wounds. However, Paul has also attributed healing to the mark without denying its wound-like qualities. Both these marks are meaningful and have been used as proof or documentation for potential close encounters. However, the marks felt different to me as someone who has deeply studied Paul's mark. The obvious precision of Paul's mark is quite unlike Whitley's story of startled jumping and scratching. Whitley's mark seemed haphazard and blurred as if some of the dots merged together somehow. The blurring is consistent with the notion of being scratched. Interestingly, it is also consistent with my own dial mark, which involves several precise dots and several blurred dots. The question now arises, does Whitley's scratch have similar geometry as Paul's puncture wounds? The fact that I connected my geometry with Paul's means that I could connect geometry to Whitley's mark even though it looked blurred to me. However, when I first looked at Whitley's mark, I was unable to discern any geometry. It looked just like a scratch to me. As a researcher, I must consider all possibilities, even skeptical ones. Perhaps he scratched his leg as he jumped out of bed in response to a hypnagogic hallucination. In a moment, I will show you the results of my geometric inquiry. Right now, take a moment to consider the implication if Whitley's mark has similar geometry as Paul's. If his blurry scratch could be described by similar geometric drawings, would that mean they came from a similar paranormal source? Let's review Paul's body mark geometry first. Here is a raw photo of his leg. I enhanced the dots, then cut them out. Once they were abstracted from the photograph, I printed them out and drew on them to figure out how to draw them using only a ruler, compass, and pencil. Here is the final geometric construction for Paul's mark drawn on top of the abstracted dots. Another thing I can do with the abstracted dots is congruence testing. I will use my graphics program to rotate or scale the dots, then overlay them on others or geometric figures to prove that they are congruent. If I can overlay the dots on a geometric drawing of them, then I can know many mathematical things about the body marks and compare the figures with other figures. I can also relate them to a single number system based on assigning the number one to the width of the entire figure. In other words, the geometric drawing receives the communication in the universal language of mathematics. Geometry is an art and a science which has many different solutions for the same problem, but I use the same techniques for all my analysis. First, I draw a line through the farthest dots, then I use that line as a radius to draw two overlapping circles, which is a form called the Vesica Pisces. My dreams with Galathog the Grey taught me a simple strategy based on the bisection of a line, which means to cut it in half, or else cutting it in the golden section, which means to divide it according to the golden ratio. Paul's mark can be precisely drawn using this technique in very simple ways, even though it may look complicated to start. Interestingly, the dots seem to deviate from meaningful intersection points in the geometric drawing. Notice how some align above or below the horizon line, or to the left or right in meaningful distances. The deviation seemed like an alien code that I have not yet cracked. Here is an abstract drawing of what I think the framework might be, which is sort of like the lines on a notebook page. What do you think? How could you make sense of the geometric precision of Paul's body mark? To be honest, when I first looked at the mark, I didn't think Whitley's would have a geometric precision similar to Paul's. I thought that a comparison between the two would show that Whitley's lacked geometric precision. But then, I deep dived into triangles associated with alien abduction and realized how I could draw them using only the Vesica Pisces. 
I realize that Whitley's mark might actually imply a triangle and not a line, and therefore may be both similar and different than Paul's. Here is Whitley's scratch from a gray alien doctor's long fingernail who was attending to another body mark on his legs by placing a long thin needle in it while he was sleeping and was startled by Whitley when he woke up from that sleep, leaving the scratch behind as it scuttled off like a rocket into the bathroom. I enhanced the bottom dots, which are faint but discernible. Then I abstracted all the dots and printed them out, or overlaid them on Paul's dots in some of the prints to compare the geometries. My first step is to draw the line between the furthest points, then use that as the radius of intersecting circles to compose the vesica Pisces around that figure. Synchronistically, Strieber advertised his book about Jesus right before the body mark conversation with Paul, which had the vesica Pisces on its cover. The first thing I noticed was that the mark was not a line or a triangle. Rather, it was an arc of a circle whose radius is defined by the width of the mark. This one fact alone is incredible and worth noting. The arc of the scratch is defined by a circle whose radius is the length between the furthest dots. The shape of Whitley's scratch in relationship to the circle that defines its arc is interesting because the arc defines one-sixth of the defining circle. In other words, you can generate the flower of life and equilateral triangles from the basic construction implied by Whitley's mark. I imagined Whitley's mark like the bulging end of an equilateral triangle. The construction reminds me of a recent construction I made for Jimmy Blanchett's footage of light orbs in triangular formations. Here is a similar construction for his golden ratio craft, which consists of three light orb UAPs. Isn't it similar to this construction for Whitley's mark? I noticed how the center of the scratch felt symmetrical. So I used my graphics program to reflect half the marks and overlay them on the other. There does seem to be some overlap between the sides, although it's not perfect. I printed out the half image with the sides reflected and overlaid on each other. Since most of them overlapped, I figured that I could easily compare both sides of the mark with the geometric framework derived from Paul's mark. If half the image could be described by the framework, then the whole image could be described as well. But it would be simpler for me to begin with half. Here is a drawing of some of my first inquiry. The different colors represent the same geometric construction nested into each other, which is based on the bisection and golden section of the initial radius. Notice how many of the dots line up with the intersection points in the drawing. Now Whitley's scratch is starting to look more like geometric communication to me than alien medical malpractice. Since half the mark lines up with the geometric framework, the whole mark should line up with Paul's mark. How does the whole alien scratch line up with Paul's dots in a line body mark? Here is a drawing with both Whitley's curved scratch and Paul's straight dial dots in a line mark. The drawing is based on the vesica Pisces, the bisection of the width of the vesica, and the golden section of that magnitude as well. The construction involves circles that are double or half the size of the initial circles and can infinitely nest. The color blue in the drawing represents the first level based on the width of the mark. Red represents the next level down based on half the initial width or radius of the vesica circles. Light green represents the third level or fourth of the initial magnitude. Dark green in this drawing represents an equilateral triangle based on the circle implied by the curve of Whitley's scratch. Isn't it interesting that the marks can fit into such a precise geometric construction? Isn't it amazing that all of Paul's dots line up with this geometric framework and that Whitley seem almost like a projection or a shadow of Paul's cast upon the curve of his circle? What do you think this could mean? How can we crack the code? Remember how I said I'd connect these marks with one of the most famous presentations of the dots in a line body mark phenomena as alien abduction proof? 
Stan Romanak presented a photograph of a line of puncture wounds as evidence for alien abduction to ABC Primetime News. His photograph has been seen by millions. Even though Stan's story is controversial, the geometry of his body mark is undeniable, as well as the fact that the geometry appeared associated with dreamlike encounters with presumed aliens who offered healing in a moment. I'm going to show you the photos. But for now, take a moment to contemplate what it would mean if Stan's proof involves similar geometry to Whitley's and Paul's body mark. Do you think that similarly strange geometry implies a similarly strange source? If alien abduction body marks are actually words in a coded language, would finding instances of these words in past documentation actually prove it is a language written by others, visitors, or aliens who are beyond our comprehension? Here is Stan's mark, and here it is abstracted for printing, and here is the geometric framework overlaid upon the abstracted dots. Notice anything similar, especially to Paul's dial mark. Notice how some dots meaningfully deviate from the intersection points of the geometric framework. Now, there's a lot to be said about this, but that is a subject for another video. What do you think? Is Whitley's mark just a scratch, perhaps the result of a jump scare and alien medical malpractice? Such a mark would likely not have discernible geometric qualities. Or do you discern geometry within Whitley's mark, just as I have discerned it within Paul's? Are these two strange body marks evidence for alien abduction, words of the same geometric language, or something else entirely? If you found value in this video, please like, subscribe, comment below, or share with a friend, because those things really help me continue to produce deeply researched inquiries into the unknown. Want to dive deeper into alien geometry and dreams? Keep watching the next video or check out the Universal Language playlist. May you dream well.